Hi, I'm Eddie Smith, director of Wayne County Fed Hotline. And I'm Steve Dupre with Dupre Video Productions. Our first year, which was 1988, we received only one call regarding a ferret. Last year, 1994, we logged in over 500 ferret-related calls. Because of the ever-increasing popularity of ferrets as companion pets, and because there seems to be so many misconceptions about our little furry friends, we thought we'd try to give potential owners an inside look at caring for a ferret and to answer some of the most frequently asked questions of ferret owners. My staff and I started researching ferrets early in 1989 in order to answer pet owners' questions. We've talked to hundreds of ferret owners and read everything we could find on ferrets. We are all now ferret owners ourselves. This video is not intended to either persuade you to get a ferret or to discourage you from it. Its purpose is twofold. We want to provide you with the information you need to help you to decide if a ferret is the right pet for you, your family, and your lifestyle. We want to give you the answers to the most frequently asked questions of new ferret owners. And we hope you enjoy watching this video as much as we enjoyed making it. The ferret is a member of the weasel family. It is not a rodent. It is a domestic animal, not a wild one and cannot survive on its own. It does have a distant cousin, the black-footed ferret, which is found in the wild. It is in danger of becoming extinct, and researchers say that the domestic ferret is not descended from it. The ferret has a long, slender, very flexible body and beautiful fur. They come in a multitude of colors and with varied markings, which may change with the seasons. Ferrets gain weight in the fall for winter and lose weight in the spring for summer. Ferrets are carnivores or meat eaters, not vegetarians. They require high quality kitten food or ferret food. Their legs are short and very muscular, with five toes on each paw and sharp, non-retractable claws. They have excellent grasping abilities and are good climbers. Adult females weigh three quarter to two pounds. Female ferrets are called jills. If spayed, they are called sprites. Adult males weigh two to three and a half pounds. The male ferrets are called hobs. If spayed, they are called jibs. Ferrets have limited eyesight and color vision, but compensate for it with excellent hearing and sense of smell and touch. They are very intelligent and extremely curious. They have a very short attention span. They are known for their musky odor, which is caused by sebaceous glands of the skin especially the apocrine glands of the neck. Also from the perpetual gland which they use for their territorial markings if they have not been altered. They have scent glands on either side of the anus which are used for protection by emitting a very strong unpleasant odor. However, they only spray when extremely frightened or angry and they cannot aim the spray. The male that has been altered and descended will give off less of an odor than a male ferret which hasn't had the surgery. The female ferret, however, has the mildest odor. We highly recommend purchasing a pet that has already been spayed or neutered. Ferrets love a challenge, are intelligent, and are very playful. They love to explore and want to investigate everything they see. They also like to steal anything they can carry or drag and hide it. They communicate through the use of body language and sounds. When a ferret is searching for something, it will make a low-pitched mumbling sound. When excited, or when it finds the object of its search, it will add hissing to its vocabulary. Tail swishing is also a sign of excitement. When frightened, the tail will take on the appearance of a bottle brush. The ferret may also squeal. When tired or bored, the ferret will flop down and flatten out on the floor. If hurt, the ferret can emit a high-pitched scream. Ferrets do a dance when highly excited or when they are trying to get you or another ferret to play. They will repeatedly leap into the air, twisting and turning their bodies and hissing. They may also run up and nip their owner's toes or ankles in order to initiate a game of chase.
Due to their increased popularity as house pets over the last few years, ferrets can be obtained from a fairly large selection of places. Pet stores, animal shelters, ferret shelters, breeders, newspaper ads, or friends. Ferrets are illegal to own in some states, and some states mandate that you have a permit. Check with your local pet store to find out if any restrictions or regulations apply to your area. When you're looking for a ferret, this is what you want to look for. A full coat, whether it's a baby or kit or an adult ferret, you want to make sure that their coat is full and shiny and they look very healthy. Um, look at their eyes. Their eyes should be clear, bright. They should show a lot of curiosity and inquisitiveness. Um, they hardly ever sit still for a second when they're awake. But they shouldn't be overly aggressive. Now all kits bite. It's their nature. It's how they play with each other. They don't hurt when they bite. But if you should run across a kit that not only nips, but nips and tends to hang on, that's one you might want to avoid as a pet. You should always look for a pet that's been spayed or neutered. We highly recommend that. An unneutered female, when she goes into her first heat, if she's not bred properly, can get very ill and will more than likely die. So always check and get your pet. If you're going to buy one that's not spayed or neutered, have it done so as soon as it's old enough. And they do ferrets at a very young age. Um, <laughs> you also want to check, another reason you want to get it at a pet store is because they'll have shot records on your ferret. Uh, you always want to ask for the shot records, no matter where you get one, and keep their shots updated. There's a lot of things that uh, can make them very ill or kill them if they're not properly immunized. <laughs> Here's two other ferrets. These are two young females. And they're beautiful too. Nice full coats, bright shiny eyes, uh, extremely curious. And that's what you want. You don't want one that's overly aggressive. As you can see, they do nip. It doesn't hurt, but they do nip. That's uh, what kits do when they play with each other. They don't bite hard. If you should be looking at a ferret and it bites and hangs on, that's one you might want to avoid as a pet because like all animals, some are more aggressive than others. <laughs> Look at that gorgeous face. Oops, lost one. Come here. Ferrets are very curious and very friendly by nature. Oh, goodness. You get a ferret, you should take it for a checkup within 24 to 48 hours of your purchase, even if it's up on its shots and, and whatever. <laughs> you need to make sure your vet, the vet you're choosing, is familiar with ferrets. And you want to do that before a real emergency comes up. What should you do or buy before you bring your new ferret home? Well, first you need to locate a vet who is familiar with ferrets and their care. You should take your new pet for a physical exam and any shots it might need within 24 to 48 hours of bringing it home. Even if the ferret has had a recent physical and is up to date on its shots, it's a good idea to have a knowledgeable vet before an emergency comes up. Secondly, you need to ferret proof your home. Block off any openings that are more than one inch in diameter. If your ferret can get his head through an opening, his body will follow. Ferrets love to explore new places, especially holes in the undersides of furniture and appliances. They also can become very adept at opening cupboard doors and squeezing out around drain pipe and water line openings. They squeeze underneath appliances and are quick to find a loose dryer vent or heat vent. Installing childproof latches on cupboards which contain cleaning products, poisons, insecticides, etc. is also a good idea. This is a great piece of furniture, but if you have a ferret, it's also a life-threatening piece of furniture to it. If you have a ferret and you have a recliner or a sofa bed, make those rooms off-limits to your ferret. This is the most frequent cause of ferret death and disabilities. Your ferret climbs up in your chair, you don't hear it, you don't see it, maybe you're even asleep. You get up, he's gone. You may not even know. 
clothes hampers and piles of laundry also make great hiding places for your pet. Never put clothes in the washer without checking them first. Exterior doors should be closed securely when your pet is out of its cage. It only takes a second for your ferret to slip out, and if it does, you may never see it again. Interior doors, which have a space underneath of more than one half inch, will not keep your ferret in or out. Floor fans, or any fan your ferret can get into, are a definite hazard to your pet because of their small size and curious nature. Keep all fans out of your pet's reach at all times. Carpet powders can cause respiratory problems for your pet, and some of them can even cause chemical burns on your ferret's delicate paw pads. This is your basic cage for one ferret. You notice it's got two levels. Um, ferrets like to have a hammock. Normally you would hang a hammock over here. You notice it has the ramp for the ferret to get up to the second level. It also leaves plenty of room so that you can separate the litter box, which if you put it in this corner, you could put the food and water in that corner. It has the, the strong clips that hook the bottom to it. Makes it uh, kind of escape proof. A ferret will escape from any opening it can, and it doesn't take a very big one. You want to have a strong um, cage clip, a strong spring. I like this particular cage because it opens from the top, uh, makes it a lot easier to clean and whatever. You can also disconnect it from the bottom. This cage is about 30 by 18 by 18, I think. They come in different sizes, but that's about as small as you want to go. Bigger is better especially if you have more than one ferret. They like a lot of room. <laughs> Ferrets really require at least an hour's exercise every day. Um, if you're buying a ferret thinking that you're going to keep it in its cage all the time, please don't do that. They do need exercise. They need time to play with you. The more time you spend with them, the friendlier they are, the better behaved they become. They're very, <laughs> very smart. They learn things very quickly. See how quick these guys learned to get out the door while it was open. If, you, if they don't get exercise, they tend to get fat and lazy. They can have um, arthritic problems, things like that. Joints get stiff, and they can become um, kind of surly, and you don't want that to happen. Keep the cage and litter pan clean. A mild disinfectant in hot water helps to kill germs. Your ferret should always be put in its cage when it is tired, during parties, when guests or strangers are coming and going, and when you're not home. This will prevent your pet from becoming lost or injured. Do not use an aquarium for a cage. There is not enough ventilation for a ferret. Do not use wood, sawdust, or cedar chips in your cage. They are a respiratory risk to your pet. Never put the cage in direct sunlight, or where it is damp or humid, or in the draft of an air conditioner. The ferret sees the cage as its den and therefore considers it a safe refuge. Always leave the cage door open when the ferret is out playing. If it becomes frightened, it will want the security of its cage. A food dish or feeder. If a dish is used, it has to be heavy enough that the ferret can't tip it over. Ceramic ones are best. Ferrets like to dig in their food, and so we prefer that a feeder hangs on the side of the cage and dispenses food as they need it. Water dish or bottle. Again, if you use a dish, it must be a heavy one. A 16 ounce water bottle that hangs on the cage is preferable. Whatever you decide to use, both food and water containers should be washed daily in hot soapy water and rinsed well. Ferrets need fresh water at all times. A piece of washable carpet for the cage floor. Ferret paws were not designed for walking on wire. A plastic litter pan and poop scoop. Bedding. Baby blankets, t-shirts, or sweatshirts of 100% cotton are best. Remove all zippers and buttons. Ferrets will chew on them if bored, and if they swallow parts, it can result in intestinal blockage or death. Bedding should be changed twice weekly to prevent odor. Do not use perfume detergents and fabric softeners to wash bedding. Some ferrets are allergic to the chemicals in them. Also, make sure bedding materials are not worn or shredded so the ferret doesn't get its claws caught in it. Litter. 
I recommend using pelleted litter made of paper or plant fibers. It's very absorbent and helps control odor. Do not use scoopable litters. They irritate the ferret's eyes and can cause respiratory problems. Do not use sawdust or wood chips. These also cause respiratory problems in ferrets. Do not use newspaper. It will dirty your ferret. A carrying case used to transport your ferret to and from the vet and other short visits. Letting your pet run loose in the car is dangerous for him and for you. Toys. Soft latex or rubber dog and cat toys work best. They also like small rubber balls with bells inside, baby rattles and cat toys on a string. Never leave toys in the cage with your pet. He may chew them if bored, and the ingested pieces may cause intestinal blockage and can lead to the death of your ferret. Examine the toys frequently and discard any soft toys that have holes in them. Ferrets also love paper bags, old purses, cardboard boxes, and pieces of PVC pipe to explore. You should also get a squeaky toy that has a sound which can be distinguished from other toys of this type. Use this toy to teach your ferret to come when you call it. Squeak it several times, and when the ferret comes to investigate the noise, give it a treat. Ferrets learn quickly when rewarded. A bell collar, so you know when your ferret is underfoot, and so you can track him when he goes out of your line of vision. It should have a tag with the pet's name and your phone number, unless, of course, the ferret has a private line. Ferrets require a diet that is high in fat and protein. Food passes through them in three to four hours because of their rapid metabolism, so they need to eat frequently. Keep their dish full at all times and always make sure they have plenty of fresh water available. Young ferrets should be fed a high quality dry kitten or ferret food. Adult ferrets need a high quality cat or ferret food. Should an occasion arise when you want to change the brand of food your ferret is using, you need to do it gradually by mixing a small quantity of the new food with the original kind, increasing the amount of the new food by a small amount each day. Sudden changes in the diet of your ferret can make it ill. Ferret treats should not exceed one teaspoon per day. They can include small pieces of fresh fruits or vegetables, chopped egg, cooked meats, or sugar-free Cheerios. Ferrets love dairy products but more than a few licks of milk or ice cream will give them diarrhea. Never give your ferret sweets, especially chocolate. Chocolate is toxic to a ferret. Ferrets may need extra fat in their diet during the cold, dry winter months. Products such as linitone or ferritone are great fat additives and can be used as a treat or put on their food two to three times a week, one eighth of a teaspoon each time. Vitamins should only be given to your ferret under direction of your vet. Excess vitamins can do more harm than good. If you're feeding your ferret a good high quality cat, kitten, or ferret food, he should be getting all the vitamins he needs. When you bring your new pet home, you need to put it in its cage for two to three hours to give it time to adjust to its new surroundings. Give it enough time to explore its cage, eat some of its food, take a nap, and relieve itself before playing with it. Place the cage in an active area of your home and speak gently to the ferret frequently to accustom it to the sound of your voice. When you let it out of the cage, speak to it before you pick it up. Remember that it has limited vision. The proper way to pick up and hold a ferret is with both hands. Use one hand to support the chest and the other to support the hindquarters. Start out with short handling sessions of only five or ten minutes. The ferret has a delicate skeletal system, so it is very important that you pick it up properly. Never grab at the ferret or make sudden moves toward it. You may frighten it and cause it to bite. Teach children, family members, and friends to treat your pet with kindness and consideration, and your ferret will become friendly and outgoing 
instead of nervous, shy, and fearful. A ferret will sleep between 15 and 20 hours a day. Some ferrets sleep so soundly that you can pick them up without waking them. Your pet will arrange his schedule to fit yours, so he is awake when you want to play. Shh. Young children tend to treat small animals like toys. Never leave your ferret unsupervised with a young child. Should the child mishandle it, it may bite out of pain or fear. Once your children have learned the proper way to handle your ferret, they will spend many enjoyable hours together. Most ferrets love to have playmates, and most ferrets get along just fine when introduced to other ferrets. But ferrets, like their owners, have unique personalities and will react differently to different situations. If you get another ferret as a playmate for your first one, you need to introduce them under supervision. Let them play together for five or 10 minutes and then separate them for a while. Lengthen their playtime together until they can play for at least one hour without fighting. If you have other pets in the home, it is best to introduce them by holding the ferret while they sniff each other and follow your instincts from there. My cat and ferret became friends almost instantly, but it took the dog about three weeks to decide that the ferret was for playing with, not eating. Remember that all pets can become jealous of a new addition to the family and need to be introduced slowly and under supervision. Keep in mind that ferrets were once mousers and may attack mice, gerbils, birds, hamsters, rabbits, or guinea pigs. Also, dogs which are bred for hunting may kill your ferret always proceed with extreme caution. Most kids are baby ferrets nip. It is one of the ways they play with their litter mates, but most ferrets outgrow it by the time they're a few months old. If your ferret bites and hangs on, simply grasp it firmly by the scruff of the neck and say no in a firm, loud voice. Remember, it is up to you to teach your pet that it can't play as roughly with you as it did with its litter mates. Never hit the ferret for nipping. You will frighten it and it will bite out of fear. Some ferrets cannot resist nipping toes occasionally. If yours is the toe nipping variety, you may want to get a bottle of bitter apple spray and spray your toes, shoes, and socks with it until your pet learns that toes are not toys. It is not toxic and ferrets hate the taste of it. Bitter apple can also be used to spray on the necks and backs of ferrets when you introduce a new one to help discourage fighting. Start with the collar. The best time to try to put a collar on your ferret for the first time is after it is played for an hour or so and is tired. Take it to a small, confined area and put the collar on. Try to keep the ferret occupied with a new toy so it is distracted somewhat from the collar. Remove the collar after four or five minutes. Repeat the process each day, leaving the collar on a little longer each time. Never leave your ferret unattended at these training sessions. Eventually, your ferret will come to accept wearing the collar. If you remember to reward the pet each time you put the collar on and remove it, it will speed up the process. Once he has learned to wear the collar, repeat the process with the harness. Caution! Never put your pet in his cage while he is wearing either the collar or harness. He could catch on something and the ferret could seriously injure itself trying to escape. After the ferret has accepted the harness, hook the leash to it and let it drag it around the room for five or ten minutes. Expand its training area the next day by taking it to another room where you can sit comfortably and hold the end of the leash until it realizes it can only go so far away from you. Once it accepts this idea, it is time to try it outside. Make sure it is also wearing its collar and ID tag when you take it out. Stand in one place and let the ferret explore the area around you. Turn to face the ferret as it moves so its exploration is limited to a circle around you. Once the ferret becomes accustomed to the idea that it has to stay within so many feet of you, you can begin to train it to walk with you by taking a step or two and coaxing it in your direction. Although you can't teach them to heal like a dog would, 
they do catch on fairly quickly to the fact that they have to stay within a certain range of where you are. Caution. Never hook a leash to the collar. Your pet will escape if you do. Always use the harness for walking your pet. you have a ferret or any other animal that's going to live in your house, it's best to have them litter trained or trained in some way so that it makes it easier on you and easier on them and makes them a much more fun pet to have. Now this is the bottom of my cage and normally with a ferret that's already trained it would be lined with a piece of carpeting. Because Shawnee is a baby and we're just starting litter training her, we've covered it in newspapers. One of the things that you want to do is when you put the litter box in one corner you want to have other things in the other corners to discourage them from going in the wrong place and kind of point them in the right direction. This is the litter box we're going to use. You can see it's got an opening in the front so that it's low, it's easy access for the ferret to get in and out. It's got a little ramp here, goes down to the inside. We're going to put this in this corner over here which when I put the uh, cage back together, this will be underneath the ramp to the second story, or it would be if I had the cage bottom turned the right way. Okay, now it'll be where it's supposed to be. I'm going to put that right there. When I put the cage top back on, the food and water will be over here. Shawnee prefers to drink out of a bowl. We'll use the water bottle occasionally, but just to make sure she's always got fresh water, we put a little bowl where the water bottle, when it's hanging, will drip in there. Then her feeder goes here. They like to play in a box. They like to play with about anything. She's been having a real good time with this one, as you can see. Put a little blanket inside of there so she can go in and take a nap. And we put that in this corner. Over here, this is where her ramp comes down. We have a hanging toy in this corner. And that's what will help encourage her to know which corner her litter box is in. This is the ferret litter that we use. It's a, a natural product. It's 100% recycled newspaper. It is supposed to be 400% more absorbent than clay litter. I don't know about percentages, but I know it's, it's something that works really well, and it's the only thing we use here for our ferrets. Put about a half an inch to an inch of this in this pan. It's way more than I do. Some ferrets, especially the younger ones, take a little more encouragement than others to get the hang of this. What you'd want to do is if your ferret has an accident somewhere on the paper, which is another thing that's nice about the newspaper, um, rip off the piece of paper that has the feces on it and put it in a corner of the litter box. The next time your ferret goes in there, your ferret will say, oh gee, that's what this is for, hopefully. It usually works, and it doesn't usually take more than a few days, um, whether it's an adult ferret or an infant or kit, to train them to use a litter box. And we're going to put this in this corner, and I'm going to put the top of the cage back on. And technically, all of the stuff should be fastened to the cage in some way because ferrets like to push it around. Um, Shawnee can only push the box around, so it's not you know a big problem. She's still too little to push around the litter box. And at that point, when she gets old enough to do that, we will put cage clips on it and fasten it to the cage. Now, this is where I always drop the water bottle. It's really nice to have a cage that comes apart from the bottom. It makes it a lot easier to clean and uh, organize it. Sometimes you need a couple more hands. It'll sit right down in there like that. I'm going to push the newspaper down under the wire. 
so that it holds it in place because they also like to dig underneath that newspaper if they can. I think it's something to play with. Okay, let's see. I think I'm sitting on something somewhere here. The rim of the water. And you see I have a little toy hanging over here at the bottom of the ramp. She really likes it, by the way, she plays with it a lot. She has her hammock, she has her mouse and her ball, which we keep in this little basket over here. It's tied to the cage. She also likes to play with that. Tiffany wants to help. We have a water bottle and we have the J feeder, which keeps her from throwing her food all over the cage, which they also like to do occasionally and her little blanket in her hammock. Now all we're missing is the ferret. We're gonna turn this around and we're gonna hook the little hooks that keep the two parts together. I guess I should have hooked this before I turned it. And as you can see, it takes maybe five minutes um, to clean up the cage. All you do is roll up the old newspaper, put down fresh, put your litter in there. And once your ferret is trained, you really should replace the newspaper with a piece of carpeting, uh, preferably the washable, machine washable bathroom kind. Um, it just saves a lot of wear and tear and also helps with flea prevention and things like that. Now I'm gonna go get Shawnee and I'll be right back. I know, you haven't had your rump for the day. This is Shawnee. <laughs> yeah, I said your name. That's right, you're a good girl. And she's nine weeks old. We've had her for about a week now. And she's a very good little ferret. She's a, a butterscotch ferret, also sometimes known as a Siamese ferret, which refers to her dark markings on her legs and stuff. But she's a, a very nice ferret. We're gonna put her back in her cage, put her in her hammock and try to get her arm out before she tries to get back out. This is the smallest cage that any of us have here. Um, we like to use it for training the young ferrets for litter training and, and other kinds of training too because it is small. Um, when the ferrets get older, we usually put them in a three-tier cage. But this cage is quite adequate. You could even have two ferrets in here. It has the upper level. She has her hammock. Um, She's got room for toys and, and room to climb around. Housebreaking is a little bit more difficult. When your pet is using the litter box consistently while in his cage, it is time to start training him to do the same when out of the cage. Start with the smallest room in the house or apartment, usually the bathroom. Put newspaper in each corner, running it four or five inches up the wall, and taping it securely so the ferret doesn't mistake it for a new toy to climb under. Once the ferret has chosen a corner, remove the soiled paper and replace it with the litter pan. Place some of the stool in the litter pan to give the ferret the right idea. When it has to go again, it should return to the same corner and use the pan. If it starts backing up into another corner, gently pick it up and put it in the pan. Don't forget to reward him when he gets it right. Again, be consistent in your efforts and rewards and you will quickly be rewarded with a trained ferret. Once the ferret masters using the pan in the first room, you can expand your training area one room at a time. Repeat the training process in each room the ferret will have access to. You may need two litter pans if you have a large house or apartment. When you take your ferret out of his cage to play, immediately place him in the litter box to remind him that it's there. Keep the litter pan clean or your pet may relieve itself next to the pan instead of in it. Most ferrets will relieve themselves right after waking up from their nap, so that's a good time to start your training. Start by filling a large box or trash can with wads of crumpled up newspaper. Stand or kneel over the box or can and place the ferret on your shoulder, 
letting it crawl around until it loses its balance and starts to fall. Say no loudly and let it fall into the newspapers. The falling added to the loud rustling of the paper and the no will cause it to be more careful next time. Stop after the ferret has fallen three or four times and do it again the next day. It shouldn't take more than five or six sessions to train the ferret to stay on your shoulder. Ferrets like to be clean. However, most of them are not at all fond of being wet. Do not bathe the ferret more than once a week, even if it is one who likes water, because it will remove the essential oils from the skin and fur which will cause a dry, itchy skin condition. You can purchase special kitten ferret conditioners to use to help prevent this if your ferret does require frequent bathing. Gather everything you need to have ready before you bring the ferret to the sink or tub. You'll need two towels, a plastic cup, ear cleanser or hydrogen peroxide, a plastic bottle cap to pour a small amount of ear cleanser in, cotton swabs, and a kitten or ferret shampoo. The easiest place to give a ferret a bath is in the kitchen sink. Run two or three inches of lukewarm water in each side. Start with the ears. Hold the ferret by the scruff of the neck with hind feet supported by the countertop. Wet one tip of the cotton swab in ear cleanser and gently clean the ears. Do not enter the ear canal. Wash ear with wet end of the cotton swab and use dry end to dry the ear. Hold the ferret gently and slowly lower it into the water, speaking softly to it to keep it from being frightened. Get it good and wet and begin lathering at the head and work your way down the body to the tip of the tail. When he's clean, pull the plug and put him in the other side of the sink and pour water slowly over him with a plastic cup. Turn on the water in the first sink and adjust it to the proper temperature. Hold the ferret under the stream to rinse well, being careful not to get water up the nose or in the eyes or ears. Wrap the ferret in a towel and towel dry. And then put the ferret in a warm, confined area and give him a dry towel and watch him dry himself off. We use the bathtub or a large cardboard box. Do not put him back in the cage until he is totally dry. Nails need to be clipped on a regular basis, not only to keep you from being scratched, but to protect your pet from getting caught in carpeting, bedding, or towels. Paw pads lose some of their moisture as the ferret ages. If your pet's pads feel dry, try a little Vaseline or vitamin E oil or cream. It's best to do this when the ferret is tired and it's much easier if someone gives you a hand. You will need cat or ferret nail clippers or a regular human nail clipper. Grasp the ferret by the scruff of the neck and support his hind feet on your lap or on a counter. Look for the pink blood vein in the claw. Do not cut back that far. You will hurt your ferret and it will bleed. Carefully clip each claw. Ferrets have very smooth skin. Check yours regularly for dryness, scabs, cuts, ulcers, lumps, and flea dirt. Ferrets shed their winter coat in the spring and can be prone to hairballs at this time. These hairballs can cause intestinal blockage and the possible death of your pet. To help prevent this, brush your ferret daily with a soft brush and ask your vet about using a laxative made especially for ferrets. Ferrets' teeth are prone to plaque and tartar just as humans are. Check your pet's teeth regularly for tartar buildup and gum infections and take it to the vet to have its teeth clean when needed. Fleas are a serious threat to your ferret. If not detected soon enough, your ferret can die from flea-induced anemia. To find out if your ferret is flea-infested, separate its fur with your fingers searching for fleas or little black specks. Check the entire ferret, 
especially under the chin, on the back, the belly, and the inner thighs. Brushing your ferret over a white towel or white paper, especially if your ferret has a dark coat, is another way to check for fleas. After brushing the ferret, check the brushed out debris for fleas or flea feces. If you find fleas or their feces, you need to deflee your ferret, its cage, other animals living with you, and your home. To deflee your ferret, use a flea shampoo made especially for ferrets or kittens. Start at the head, shampoo your pet all the way to the tip of its tail. Use a flea comb to work the shampoo through the fur. The shampoo must stay on for five minutes to be effective. Rinse and towel dry the ferret, check the coat again, and remove any fleas. To deflee the cage, remove everything and wash the cage thoroughly. Spray the entire cage with cat flea spray and let dry. Wash all toys, dishes, and water bottles in hot sudsy water and rinse well. Wash the bedding and dry on maximum heat setting. Empty the litter pan, wash and disinfect it, and add new litter. Do not forget to deflee the pet carrier in the same manner. Deflee all other pets according to shampoo directions. Always use shampoo designed for specific pets. Cat shampoo for cats, dog shampoo for dogs, etc. Dog shampoo is too strong and can be fatal if used on a ferret. Deflee your home, including the basement and the garages. You can buy products to do this yourself or hire a professional. If you are a do-it-yourselfer, make sure you follow the directions. Remove all kids and pets before you start and don't return them until the insecticide has dried and the house has been well ventilated. Ticks can cause paralysis and anemia that can result in the death of your ferret. If you live in an area where ticks are common, do not keep your ferret outdoors, in basements or garages. Also, give your ferret a thorough inspection after taking it outside. If you find a tick on your ferret, contact your vet at once. Ticks are tricky to remove and are carriers of diseases such as Lyme and Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Now here's a list of do's and don'ts for you and your ferret. You'll probably have to read it to your ferret. <laughs>